only every bit glad to lose his brother, but men are all burlesque to one another. <laughs> Oh! 
charitable love redeemed even from the fall of fortune, gave you shelter and food to be what you now are. Added to the trust I have at home, in foreign stables, or upon the sea, to your direction. Tied the good opinions, both of myself and friends, to your endeavors. So fair for your beginning. But with this, as I remember, you never had permission to love your master's daughter. And even when I had found a wealthy husband for her, I take it, sir, you had not. But, however, I shall break the neck of that commission and let you know you are but a merchant's agent. Sir, I do liberally confess. I am yours, bound both by love and duty to your service, in which my labor has been all my profit. I have not lost in bargain, nor have I delighted where your honest gains upon my back. For your daughter, if there be any love for my deservings, born by her virtuous self, I cannot stop it, nor am I able to refrain her wishes. She's private to herself, as the best of knowledge, as to whom she'll make so happy as a side boy. But surely, you cannot mean to match her unto a fellow of so lame a presence, one that has so little left of nature in him. Tis very well, sir. I see your wisdom. How well this shall be cured? Your concern becomes you. And thus it must be. I here dismiss you, my house and service. Take your liberty. And when I want to sign, I'll send for you. These be the fair rewards of them that love. O oh, you that live in freedom, never prove the travail of a mind led by desire. Why, how now, friends? How could my father thunder? Struck and struck dead, unless the remedy be full speed and virtue. And what I expected long, no more your fathers. But mine? But yours, and only yours I am. That is all I have to keep from ruin. You dare be constant still. Oh, fear me not. In this I dare be better than a woman, nor shall his anger nor his own pursue me, were they both equal to a prince's power. You know of my rival? Yes, and love him dearly. Even as I love the sharp fever of foul weather, I pray you, Jasper, fear him not. You know of the plot we both agree on. Yes, and will perform my part exactly. I desire no more. Farewell and keep my heart. Tis yours. I take it. He would have to do miracles to make me forsake it. Fire upon them, my little infidels. What's the matter here? Well, I'll be hanged for a hat for me. Then it's not some trickery or put in this play. Well, let them look to it. Grief must come. Oh. When he does, if there be any tricks of ruin. Oh, let them ruin make to husband in God's name. They can find out and say, look, I pray, pretty youth, is Ray ready? He will be presently. I think he will come here. Carry him and find it. Oh, this stick of licorice. Tell him his mistress sent it and have him bite a piece. Twill open his pipe, say. <laughs> Come, sir, she's yours. Upon my face, she's yours. You have mine. As for the other obstacles between your hopes and hers, they are scattered and are no more. My wanted apprentice, I have dismissed him and sent him to discover new masters yet unknown. I thank you, sir. Indeed, I thank you. Husband, sweetheart. It shall be known. Tell me one thing, but tell me truly. Uh, stay, I ask you, till I question my husband. What is it, now? Oh, sir, I know it, sir. 
Sir, my friend, although it's right to say, all things must have an end. And that we call the pudding hat is too. Well, then it must each day, Jeffrey, if in this bloody simile I put my love or in this depraved things of that. Well, sir, you know you are sure that I can say. Get but my daughters and wed her when you will. But you must be bold and clap your clothes on to her. Oh, I know you have language enough to win. Oh, poor Sometimes I want you as a stringer in this day. <laughs> I take your gentle offer and with all, will yield love again, love reciprocal. Lucy, you're with him now. You call, sir? Come, give entertainment to this gentleman <coughs> and see you not be perverse. Do what, sir, <coughs> my presence will be behind. Dear Mistress Lucy, how do you? Are you well? Give me your hand, and then I pray you tell. How was your little brother and your sister? Whether do you love me or any other? Sir, so these are quickly answered. So they are, but women are not cruel. But how far now is it distant from this place we are in? What's that blessed place? Our father's warren? What makes you think of that, sir? Even that face. The stealing rabbits in that place. God keep it or the keeper, I know not whether. To my cost and charges brought you there, there again. What is your game, sir? Oh, let no game or anything that tended to do the same. Be evermore remembered now, fair killer, for whom I set me down and paid my tiller. Oh, fair and kind gentleman, I warrant you. When will you do so much for me, George? Forgive me, sir. I'm sorry for your losses, but as the proverbs say, I cannot cry. I would you had not seen me. So would I, unless you had the inclination to do me good. Why cannot this strange passion be withstood? Send for a constable and raise the town. Oh, no. My valid club will batter down millions of constables. It puts a flight, even the great watch, in this summer's day. It's not. Oh, please, please, sir, would it be good? I feel that we women cannot hope or value that. Have no resistance. <laughs> Yield then. I am full of pity, but though I say it, to pull out of my pocket, thus, a pair of gloves. Good, Lucy, look. The dog's tooth, nor the doves are as white as these, and sweet they be whipped about with silk, as you may see. Well, sir, I take them kindly, and I thank you. Uh, what would you more? Nothing. Is it farewell? Your soul, my soul, poor lady, let me tell before we part. For what we meet together, God grant me time, patience, and fair weather. Speak and declare your mind in terms so brief. I shall. Then first and foremost, small than I'll speak of now, love hath tossed me in a furious blanket like a tennis ball, and now I rise aloft, and now I fall. The last the gentleman, the last the day. I thank you heartily, and as I say, thus do I still continue without rest, in the morning like a man, at night a beast, roaring and bellowing my own disquiet. Then I much fear I shall forget all of you. Now, if I say Mary, that would be a great pity. Oh, please, you love me, Lucy, and finish show me.
yourself too much at the first. Begin, Rick. <clears throat> then Palmer and Trident, snatching their lances from their dwarves and clasping their helmets, galloped after the giant. Palmer, having gotten sight of him, came aside and said, Stay, treacherous thief, for thou mayest not so carry a sway her that's worth the greatest gold in the world. And with these words, gave him a blow on the shoulder. Trinus, coming to the knight that had Agricole behind him, soon set him aside his horse with his neck broken in the fall. As so the princess, getting out of the throng between joy and grief, said, All happy knight, the mere balls have such balls arms. Now may I be well assured the love thou sparest me. I wonder why the kings do not raise an army of fourteen or fifteen hundred thousand men to destroy these giants. They do much hurt to wandering damsels who go in quest of their knights. Oh, what Ray says is true, for they say that King of Portugal can eat, but the lion giants and the echoes come and snatches me from Hold the your head. tongue! <coughs> On Ray. And these knights are much to be commended, who, neglecting their possessions, wander with the squire and dwarf through the desert to relieve poor ladies. There are no well spoken and fair courteous knights in this age. They would have called one the son of a whore that Palmer of England would have called fair sir. And the one Trinus would have called right for his damsel, they would have called damn bitch. Oh, they sworn they will be, for they called me so a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> but what great spirit can be content to sit alone in a shop with his blue apron and, and pestle, selling dragon's water to visited houses? That he might follow feats of arms, and through his noble achievements, procure such a heroic history to be written of his royal prowess. Well, smoke and rain. Some more of those words. Why should I not then pursue this course, both through the credit of myself and our company? However, for all the worthy books of achievement, I have not yet read of a grocer errant. I will be said knight. Have you ever heard of any that have ever wandered without squire and dwarf? My apprentice Tim should be my trusty squire. And Lil George, my dwarf. Hence my booing. Yet in remembrance of my former trade, upon my shield should be portrayed a burning pestle, and I should be known as the Knight of the Burning Pestle. <laughs> I want you to not forget your old trade. You are ever so meek. Tim. Yes? My beloved squire, and little George, my dwarf, I charge that from henceforth you never call me by any other name than the right courteous and valiant knight for very pestle. That you never call any female by the name of woman or wench, but fair lady if she have her desires. If not, distressed damsel. That you call all horses and he's deserts, and all horses Alfred's. Oh, good, Rafe. Tell me, George, do the gentlemen like Rafe? Aye, I, I warrant the players would give all the shoes in their shop for him. Oh. My beloved squire Tim, stand out. Admit this were a desert, and over it an errant knight came, and I should bid you inquire of his intents. What would you say? Sir, my master sent me to know where you are writing. No. This! Fair sir, the right courteous and valiant knight of the burning pestle commanded me to inquire upon what adventure you are bound, whether it's to relieve some distressed damsel or otherwise. What well, I cannot remember. I said Rafe told him once before, and all the gentlemen heard him. Did he not, gentlemen? Did Rafe not tell him? Right courteous and valiant knight of the burning pestle. Here is a distressed damsel that I have a hat penny worth of pepper. Oh, what a sweet boy. He got it right. Relieve her with all courteous language. Now shut up shop. No more my apprentice and dwarf, but my trusty squire. Now I must bespeak my shield and army pestle. Oh, I pray thee.
forget a parent's love, I must preserve the duty of a child. I rent not from my master's house, nor do I return to have your money maintain my life. Good oh, gracious, child, listen how he talks logic with his mother. You had better tell her you lie. If he were my son, I'd hang him up by his heels and flay him and salt him, the horse. My coming is only to beg you, love, though never gain it. And howsoever you esteem of me, there is not a drop of blood hidden in these veins that I remember well belongs to you that brought me home. I had sorrow enough for you. God knows that I'll hamper you well enough. Get in and learn of your brother, Michael. Rudy Charles, I'll 
from me or left. Within the skies a law from me or left. This is, as I take it, 
the perilous wall tying down, in whose bottom stands the enchanted valley. Uh, Michael, we are betrayed, we are betrayed. Here be the uh, giants. Fly, boy, fly. Place on my helm again. What noise is this? Some gentle lady flying the embrace with a courteous knight? I will relieve her. And tell the lady I am here, the knight that wears this pestle in the honor of all ladies. I swear revenge upon that recreant coward that dare pursue her. Go so comfort her, and that tender knight that bears her company. I go, great knight. George, my trusty dwarf and friend, reach me my shield and hold it while I swear. First by my knighthood, then by this bright burning pestle of mine honor, the living trophy, and to all respect due to distressed damsels, here I vow never to end the quest of this distressed lady and fair squire until by my valor I gain their liberty. Heaven bless the knight that thus relieves for her, gentlewoman. Oh, I think that that's a fight in it. Oh, but George! I will not have him go away so soon. I shall be sick if he go away, that I shall. Call Rafe again, George. Call Rafe again. Let him fight before me. Let him kill all that comes near him. Please, little bird, he shall kill them all. Oh. <coughs> now, Fulton, if you be not only ill, show me thy better face. And bring about your desperate wheel, that I may climb at length and stand. This be our place of meeting, if love have any constancy. How shall I please thee, deserve your smiles, when I am only rich in misery? My father's blessing, and this small coin is my only inheritance. From the earth you came, and to the earth I give thee, there, grow and multiply, while a fresher air breathes me a fresher fortune. How? Illusion? God's dear blessing upon the heart that left it here. Tis mine. These pearls, I take it, were not left for swine. Oh, I do not like that. Did I not tell 
tell you now what rain could do? Clean action and good delivery, they may all cast their caps at it. I dare say none of them can catch him. I agree, Dudley. <gasps> Fair mistress Lucy, though I'm in fault for your lame horse, I love me to all find. Which way to go or what to say, I know not truly till it be broad day. Fear not, Master Humphrey, I am good enough to guide us through. Then up, or ride, or walk where you repose. Or sit, or if you will, go pluck a rose. Since you say the word, we'll sit down and take a nap. Tis better in town where we nap together in the evening. Or to sleep without a snatch with much grieving. You're merry, Master Humphrey. So I am, heaven ever merry to my dam. Lucy! Dear friend Lucy! Yeah. Oh my! If this be so, you use me fine. What do you think I am? A complete fool. I'll tell your master, for I know him well. If you be so poor and poor to tell. Take that one! And that! And don't show me this! And say I gave you well. Oh, I have a new converse to pay me. Pray be quiet. Go! Get your nightcap to cure your beaten bones. Farewell, my little fool. <coughs> I'm sorry I cannot bear your company. <coughs> oh, well, the devil's damned was never so flanged in hell. This young chapter went heavy on my conscience. Oh, I do not teach him a lesson for wronging this poor gentleman. Then I am no true woman. He'll hang in the gallows. God bless him. Oh, you're too bitter, honey. The young man may do well enough, despite all this. <coughs> oh, call me here, Master Humphrey. Oh, oh. Let me take a look at you. Oh, bless him. <coughs> George, he has a bump on his head the size of a chicken tail. Scarcely go, I must run! Ah! 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 
he could no more have stood in Rafe's hands than I could stand in my Lord Mayor's. I find the cause of enchantments, and Rafe shall beat him yet. Be no longer upset, for it shall be so. Beforehand till noon tomorrow. Why should I be sad? I think I have. 
have half a dozen Jovio spirits in. I'm three merry men and three merry men. To what end should any man be said in this world? Ah, and you came from Ossingham, from that old land. Why, you, you met not with my true love. By the way, as you come. Master Marathon, my daughter's gone. This mirth does not become her, but my daughter's gone. Why? Who is she be? What care I? Let her come, go, or tarry. Please do not mock my misery. It is your son, whom I made my own, that has stolen my joy. My child away. He set her on a milk-white steed, and himself upon a grave. He never turned his face again, and wore her quite away. I'm worth of the kindness I have shown you and your family. Too late I perceive you are consenting to my daughter's loss. Your daughter? What's there here with your daughter? Think no more of her. Let her go. But sing loud. If both of my sons were on the gallows, I would sing down, down, down. They all rise. They never shall. <laughs> oh, if I could but see her once again. And she once more embrace her aging father. So that she may once more embrace her aging father. She cares much for her father. She cares not for her mammy, she cares not for her daddy. Oh, she is, she is, she is, the Lord of the Rays last day. For this, I shall pursue that son of yours to death. Oh, and do! And when you've killed him, give him flowers of Enoch. And give him flowers, you know. Give him red, white, and blue, and yellow. <laughs> I'll fetch my daughter. I'll hear no more of your daughter. It spoils my mirth. I say, I'll fetch my daughter. Really? Never man for a lady's sake. Down, down. For me to die. Poor Sir Guy. Down, nearly down. Oh, for Lucy's sake, that lady bright. Down, down. Never man be held with eye. Down, nearly down. <laughs> I will be revenged by heaven. How do you like this, too? Ah, this is well, honey. But if rain were hot once, you should see more. <laughs> oh, Mr. George, the fiddles go again. As for this is scurvy music, I gave that horse some money, and I'll have the weights of someone. Yeah. 
strong, and I am hurt. My love is lost, never to get again. Bleed. Bleed and die, but I cannot. Hope! You have forsaken me. Where have you fled? Tell me if you are anywhere remaining. Shall I see my true love again? No. She will not look upon the loser. Come on. 
with shame, and where I would not let you lose your life against a man, but a furious fiend of hell. Well, speak on. Tell what he is and where. For I swear by my blazing badge never to rest until I've quelled the man or beast or fiend that dares do such evil work to all errant knights. Not far from here, near a craggy cliff, at the north end of this distressed town, stands a lonely house, and in it a cave, in which an ugly giant now has one. Barroso! In his hand, he has a lance of naked steel, and an entry to protect his clothes from the blood of those knights in which he massacres. Outside his door is a bell, that no sooner does Barbarossa hear it, that he rushes forth, and he places a knife in an enchanted chair, and with his fingers and instrument, he snips the head of those knights, and in the wretched chair, he hears the most hideous noise. <laughs> Thus, every knight's adventure, he got grim. Now, no creature dares encounter him. In God's name, I will fight him, kind sir. Take me to where the giant dwells, and I doubt not the curb for this foul traitor, and send to the devil his guilty soul. Brave knight, I'll take you within sight of this loathsome place, inhabited by a more loathsome man, but dare not stay. St. George, send on me, boy. George, do you think Gregory can down the giant? Oh, I bet he does. Now, I have seen him wrestle with a great Dutchman and hurl him forth. Oh, look, George, <laughs> Mistress Caricott, and I would have great common find the giant. I tell you truly, I long to see him. Mistress Maricott, be gone. You shall have the audience presently, but I have a little business. My husband is not. Mistress Maricott, please restrain your passion. And do we have great right dispatch the giant out of the way? Goodbye, Mrs. Boy! Send for rape in this horse and giant, quickly! If you please, sir, we cannot. You'll actually spoil our play and make it to be against it cost money. You will not allow us to continue with our plot. Send for rape and the giants, and I'll trouble you no more. Will you give your hand at that? Give him your hand, George, too. I'll send him to you presently. <laughs> He's such a sweet boy, but I think he'd be troubled with worms. Thistle and mare's milk is the only meal for it. Oh, look, George, Rafe! Oh, God send you good luck, Rafe! Oh, oh. Valiant knight! Yonder is his mansion. See where the copper basin is? I dare not stay. He will appear. Not swear at the basin till it break or the giant speak.
hopeless man. See to what desperate end your treachery has led you. The just gods who never prosper those who dare despise them have paid you honor by my step on. Oh, listen, George. What woeful cry there is. There's a woman in there. What ghastly noise is this? Speak, Barbarossa, or by my place and steal your head goes on. The prisoners of mine. Run, squire and dwarf. Deliver them with speed. George, shall we not kill the giant? I would think that if he let him go, he would do more harm than he ever did. Not so, Mouse. If he could convert him. Here are these pining wretches. From this infernal monster you shall go. Make use as fair ladies and tender squires so. Convey them hence. Mercy, great knight. I do recant my ills, and never more will gentle blood spill. I give you mercy. But upon my pestle you shall swear the promise utter. I swear and kiss. Depart then and amend. Ooh, honey, I can tell the gentlemen like rape. Oh, yes, daughter, I see it well enough. Come, squire and walk. For the sun grows towards his set. And we have many adventures yet. I know we could have beaten that boy if you were set on it. Oh, Mistress Mary Bottom, my book. Mistress Mary Bottom, you may go on now. Now that rape is done. Make my boy, indeed, mother. Make me merry. We are at home now. But you shall find the house flung out of the windows. This is the old world of my husband. If I get in with them, I'll teach them a lesson that they shall have little foxes come scraping here again. Why, Master Marathon, <coughs> husband, Charles, Charles Marathon. If you will sing and dance and laugh, then all over that again, and he cried, Yeah. 
for here I profess an everlasting hate to all your name. Will you so, sir? Come, Nick. Let him keep his wind to cool his porridge. We'll go to your nurse. She knits silk stockings, and we'll knit too, boy, and be beholding to none of them. Sir, I take it you are the master of this house. How good, boy? Then to yourself, sir, comes this letter. From whom, my lord? From him that was your servant, but no more shall that name ever be, for he is dead. Grief of your anger broke his heart. I saw him die, and from his hand received this paper with a charge to bring it here. <coughs> Sir, that I have wronged your love, I must confess, in which I have brought upon myself the ill opinion of my friends. Let not your anger, good sir, outlive me, but allow me to rest in peace with your forgiveness. Let my body, if a dying man may so much prevail upon you, be brought to your daughter, that she may truly know my hot claims on Alberic, and receive a testimony of the zeal I bore her virtue. Farewell forever and be ever happy, Jasper. God's will is strong in this. I do forgive him, yet I am glad he is at peace. Boy, you may bring the body and let him have his will, if that be all. It is here without, sir. You may bring it in. I do not fear it. I'll be your usher, boy, although I say it, he did owe me something once. Well, he paid. If there by any punishment inflicted on the miserable mood yet I feel, let it seize me and press down my soul. I cannot bear the pain of delaying tortures. Come, come, O death, bring me to thy peace. that which you already have. Jasper, now dead and here enclosed, commanded me to bring his body here and to crave a tear from those fair eyes. He shall have many. Good friend, depart while I take my leave of this dead man that I once loved. Look at me. 
Do you know me yet? Have you shadow, my friend? Dear Substance, I swear I am no shadow. Feel my hand. It is the same as it was. I am your Jasper, living and loving. Pardon my rash attempt. My foolish proof by putting practice of your loyalty. Do me to anything. If death, I take it, and willingly. If death, I'll give you for it. You are no spirit, but my own truest friend. Why do you come to me in this manner? To take you away. It cannot be, for I am locked up here and watched at all hours, that it is impossible for me to escape. Nothing more possible. Within this coffin, you could convey yourself. Let me alone. I have the wits of twenty men about me. I only crave the shelter of your closet a little, and then fear me not. Creep in that they may take you away. Fear not, my dearest love. I shall be with you soon. Lie quiet that all goes well. Boy! Take the coffin away and be wary. Tis done already. Now I must go. Boy! Boy! Your servant, sir? Do me this kindness, boy. Before you bury the body of this fellow, carry it to his old merry father and salute him from me. And bid him sing. He has come. I will, sir. And bring me word what tune he is in. And have another crown. But do it truly. I have bidden him a bargain and will now vex him. God bless your worship's health, sir. Convey him. Now with gilded staff and crossed scarf, the Maylord, here I stand. Oh. 
Rejoice, O English hearts, rejoice! For now the fragrant flowers do spring and sprout in seemly sorts. The little bird do sit and sing. The lamb do make fine sport. The bird is our bud that makes the little schoolboys cry. The lords and ladies, for the disport and play, do sometimes kiss on the grass and sometimes in the hay. The rumbling rivers now do warm for little boys to paddle. The sturdy steed goes off the grass, and up they hang his saddle. And be like they, O oh you, I say, of this same noble town, and nip the lock your velvet heads and slipping off your gowns. March out and show your willing minds by twenty and twenty to Pogston and Newington, where ale and cakes are plenty. Up then, I say, both young and old, man and maid of maid, for the guns and drums do bounce aloud, and merry table play. Which to prolong, God save our king and bring his country peace and rid out treason from the land. And with that, my friends, I do cease.
enemy. All the stink of his guns. For believe me, brethren, the rude rumbling of a brewer's car is far more terrifying. Neither let the stink of the powder offend you. For more valiant stink is with you, I think. I say this not to take away the hopes of your return, for as you shall see, I do not doubt it. But very shortly, your loving wives and children whose care you bear, remember whose cause you have in hand. And like a true born scavenger, scour me this famous realm of villains. I have nothing more to say but this. Stab your attack to the lands, and show the world that it is well brandish a sword as shaken apron. St. George and on, my hearts! St. George! St. George! George. necessary at this time. Sir, if you know what I've brought to you, you have little list to sing. Oh, the minion round, for long I have sought, and now I have found. What hast thou here brought? A coffin, sir, and your dead son Jasper in it. Master Mary 
It is my master's voice. Good sir, go hold him to talk while we hide ourselves. What are you? Are you married? <laughs> you cannot enter unless you are married. I am, sir. Sing me. No, good sir, open to you. Sing, I say, or by the merry year, you cannot come in. Well, sir, I'll sing. Fortune, my foe, why doth thou frown on me, etc. <laughs> You see your entertainment, sir. Oh. I pray you, be merry. Oh. Master Merida, I am here to ask forgiveness for the wrongs I have placed upon you and Joe. Son, they are infinite, yet my contrition shall be more than they. I do confess, my hardness broke his heart, for which heaven has given me punishment more than my age can carry. His wandering spirit follows me everywhere, crying, I shall haunt you for your cruelty. My daughter, she is gone. I know not how, taken invisibly. And whether living or in the grave, I do not know. Master Marathon, these are the ways that will seek me to my grave. Forgive me, sir. Sir, I do forgive you. And I pray you, be merry. But the boy who played the name, can you forgive him too? With all my heart, sir. Speak it again and heartedly. I do, sir. Now, by my soul, I do. If you forgive him, sir, then clasp their hands together. I do. I do. Well, then there is nothing left to be said in this matter. And now that we are all kind, I do not like this at all. <laughs> Hear me, one of you. Everyone's part has come to an end except grapes, and he's left out. Tis wrong of yourself, sir. We have nothing to do with this part. Come away, Ray. Now make of him as you have done with the rest. Oh, husband, no. Let him come out and die. Oh, so he shall. Ray, come quickly and die, boy. <laughs> On no occasion, in a comedy too. Taking no care of that is not his part at an end, think you, when he is dead. <laughs> Come away, Ray! Thank you. 
one by me. <laughs> All you fellows of four kids. Farewell to all you boys in Barry London. Whenever again shall we more upon Shrove Tuesday meet and pluck down on houses of iniquity. My pain increases. <laughs> Never again shall I more hold one open or another pumps both legs nor dow the satin gown with rotten eggs. Oh, set up all steak! And now I die. <laughs> Hey, ho, it's not for the night that he's the 